I, I know that I and others uh, who believe that there is a problem are set in opposition to powerful forces. Uh, the Alberta government is a, is a large and powerful entity that does not take kindly to those who oppose their view of the world. And so that, that does concern me that they will attempt to um, take some, some actions against me. But you have to tell the truth, and that's, that's, that's I'll just follow the trail where it leads. Mr. Speaker, community members and uh, local doctors in Fort Chippewan have been raising their concerns for almost a decade about the high rates of cancer that uh, erupted after oil production began near the Athabasca River. Their concerns were not taken seriously, and only now, amid protests on the steps of the legislature, does the government realize this is not a problem they can continue to brush under the carpet. To the Premier, since uh, there is a need to conduct a new investigation, does the Premier believe that the findings of the original investigation conducted in 2005 were inadequate and superficial? The Honourable Premier? Uh, the original uh, investigation was done by Alberta Health and Wellness, uh, uh, the federal government and uh, our cancer board, uh, done by professionals and uh, I expect that the findings that uh, they presented uh, were true and accurate. Today's government campaigns the oil over the environment, profits for foreign companies over the health of its own citizens. The effects of oil on, uh, on humans is uh, not well understood at all. Should this surprise anyone? No. I suppose 1,200 people downstream from billion of dollars development are perhaps merely a nuisance. Imagine if the Athabasca River flowed south instead of north and the toxins and poisons of these billions of dollars land destroyers flowed south towards the mainstream Alberta population. Imagine if their graveyards were filling with the dead, harmed by oil-related diseases. And studies where people are exposed to crude oil into their diet typically are in countries that don't have the resources nor the desire to find out the answer to those sorts of questions. The numbers actually showed a, a, a 30 percent higher rate of cancer, which which is expressed as a soft concern surrounding the rates in this community. That it's it, it's not really alarming. You're looking at staffing issues. You're looking at you know people not trained to do their their job appropriately. Management focused on the other end of the equation. Industry or a government not being able to monitor. You are not monitoring. Monitoring organizations not telling the truth. This is, there's a big failure here waiting to happen. There's not a tremendous amount of opportunity to, to create an enormous environmental problem. And in the mining operation, um, we're, we're, we're hauling dirt around is, is what we're doing. I mean, at, at its core, that's, that's most of what we do. Last Monday, 500 birds landed on a toxic tailings pond near Fort McMurray, and fewer than five came out alive. The same day, the minister is writing on his website that, and I quote, Alberta is proving to the world that you can produce energy in an environmentally responsible manner. Canadians, by and large, are not uh, a, a very environmentally sensitive people. We are, we are basically engineers, and we engineer landscapes, and we change landscapes. We dam rivers, we cut down forests, and now we're uh, digging up uh, a forest for, for the tar sands. In Alberta, I think the uh, situation is more like what the uh, situation was in Alaska prior to the Exxon Valdez, where this was seen as a, a pretty much uh, huge economic boon uh, to the economy with uh, very little downside. I strongly suspect that the uh, environmental downside will come to light and that it will ultimately put the uh, Exxon Valdez to shame in terms of scale once uh, the full impact of the tar sands development becomes known. I think
think if many Albertans who are benefiting financially from the oil sands development were to fly over that area, even people who've been desensitized by urban life cannot help but be impressed by the absolute devastation of the boreal forest and, and ultimately of water courses and uh, just the ecosystems. We just passed some of the more devastating stuff that I've ever seen. Um, I've, this is the second time doing it and it's, uh, I thought I could handle it this time, but there's a point there where I had to, uh, I had to not look at anybody because um, I couldn't actually take it emotionally. Throughout the years that I had pests, I never seen things like that getting worse. That what if you deform pests? We said it's deformed, but nobody would would listen. It's sad, you know. All companies are going to destroy our industry. That's our industry. Because we're not uh, uh, mainstream or white man scientist, we can't just put our finger on it. Every time you come out to say that, then you have to go through the legal thing, the legal action. Legal action requires your white man side of, you know, pardon me. The mercury levels and the arsenic levels are high. Nobody should be drinking water from the lake, especially this end of the lake, or from the Athabasca River. We know the toxins are higher in the lake than they are in the river because they do settle here. If it were me living in Fort Chip, I would want to know a heck of a lot more about how those pathways might be getting to me and what combination of chemicals being mobilized by tar sands mi mining I might be ingesting. And it's known that exposure to these chemicals can lead to reproductive and birth defects decreased body weight and harmful effects on skin, body fluids, and your immune system. There are also, many of them are potent cancer-causing agents. Now, cholangiocarcinoma is a, a cancer of the biliary tract. And by the time the diagnosis is made, very often the patient is beyond uh, treatment. I actually saw two cases in the community, two tissue sample documented cases. The, the stats tell us that I should not be seeing uh, this disease any more than one in 100,000. We have a population for a chip that, by the municipality's census uh, in Wood Buffalo, it stands at 744. Any physician who has the guts to step forward and say, I think there's a problem, I care for these people, and I believe that we have rare forms of cancer here that shouldn't be here, and I believe that there might be an environmental cause. That person is just raising a concern. He's asking for involvement from the greater community to try to figure out what the problem is. And instead, what he's met with is government, Health Canada, or the Alberta government coming down on this uh, doctor uh, to try to silence him. It, it's, it's a big wrong. It is a huge wrong, and, and there probably is, you know, criminal activity going on to, to suppress, you know, uh, a report. If, if, it doesn't ha if it happens and nobody sees it, it's like the tree falling in the forest. Does anybody here, does anybody care? We've got protocols in place. Premier just signed a protocol as, as late as The Environment last. Minister of Alberta, Rob Renner, even recently stated in the legislature that it is not the job of Alberta Environment to act as an advocate for the environment. And that's a stunning statement. Thinking of writing off these huge areas of the landscape, uh, I've seen recent uh, comparisons that put the amount of country that will be damaged as uh, equivalent to the size of the state of Florida. You could imagine what the U.S. Uh, uh, reaction would be if a foreign power were to come in and say, incidentally, we're going to destroy Florida. Why are we not reacting? that way.